This is our second derivative test. Right? Or the F double prime test. So uh, what we're testing for is concavity. Uh, if f double prime of x is, is positive, then f is concave up. And I like to say positive people smile. So I'm looking for that shape in concavity. So uh, other people will say it holds water, right? It would collect water in there kind of thing, right? If f double prime of x is negative, then f is concave down. Uh, negative people are a downer. or frowning, right? So concave down, yes? So kind of you can think of things like, like some kind of curve like this, right? Like ln of x, first derivative is positive, it's increasing. Second derivative is negative, it's concave down, right? In fact, it's always increasing, but concave down means it must be what? Always increasing, but concave down, it must be... What's it doing in the long run? What kind of hill is it at the end? Real steep or real shallow? Shallow. So if it's right, so we can tell something about the original graph, where it's going, what's, how is it changing by looking at the first derivative and second derivative. Like I said in Calc two, we're going to go up to the sixth, the sixth <laughs> derivative. <laughs> it's not easy to say it. Um, when f double prime of x changes signs and uh, c comma f double prime of c exists uh, then the point is an inflection point oops sorry c comma f of c not f double prime of c Here's the killer piece of it, and you see it's, it's long. This is as long as the first derivative test already, but there's one more piece. If uh, C F of C is a local min or max, F prime of C is what? Yep, and f double prime of c is, for local min, what is it? Positive, smile. If it's a local max, f double prime of c is negative. So there's the whole test, and if we're doing the whole test, we're concluding about all three processes, concavity, inflection points, local mins or maxes.
If f double prime is negative, then f, the original function is concave down. Yeah, where you want me? Yep. Yep. Okay, ready? Step by step. Okay, I don't mind waiting. Okay, nice. Okay, step by step. Ready? Uh, graph F, right? Notice what? The domain uh, the local min and max, the concavity, uh, and possible inflection points. Um, so I like... Uh, for my example function, I'm going to use e to the uh, minus x squared over 2. This is a, a bell curve. And I, I want us to imagine that we are in a helicopter, right, above the ground, the back, right? So the road is here, and we're in a helicopter looking down on the road. So when I say we're driving on this road, we're not going up a hill. We're just turning left to right. Right? Does that make sense? So start driving on the road for me. Right here, this way you're already turning the wheel to the left. And then right around here, you see that you're turning back to the right. That's an inflection point. There's a change in concavity. Do you see the smile here? Right? And then the frown here. And then the smile again. Right? So you can see yourself driving on that road making two changes in your steering, those are the two inflection points in this case. There could be more, there could be none. Right? So I'm seeing concave up and concave down, right? Yes, you with me there? And then, so that means I've I probably got those, those, those are my inflection points, right? Okay, uh, find F prime of X and the C1 critical values. C1 meaning first derivative critical value. C sub 2 will be second derivative critical value. Yes, you with me? Find F double prime of X and the C2 critical values. So find the critical values of the second derivative. That means when... Uh, when the second derivative is zero, meaning when the numerator of the second derivative is zero, or the second derivative doesn't exist, meaning the denominator of the second derivative is zero. Create 
your sign table slash number line, right? With C2 values and test values using C1 values when possible. So I want, I want, when I'm doing the number line, remember I'm doing a second derivative test, so I'm checking the sign, S-I-G-N, of the second derivative. I have to check left of, right of, all of the critical values, and in between, all of the critical values of the second derivative, right? But if possible, I want to put my test values as C1 values, because then I'm going to know if I test the C1 in the second derivative, right? And that, that C1 value is giving me a local max, then I know my derivative, second derivative, should be negative, right? Negative people frown, I'm at the top of the hill there, right, for my, for my test value. Uh, conclude about concavity. Um, inflection points and local min max. And I, I, I think that conclusion piece will be obvious when I do it. Uh, meaning if it's a local uh, max, my derivative ch first derivative changes from positive to negative, and the point exists, right? For an inflection point, my second derivative changes signs and the point exists. And to find the point, I always go back to the original function. To find the criticals, I use the derivatives, right? All right, let's do this one. Horrible, right? Isn't it? Uh, so f of x is e to the minus x squared over 2. We already know what it looks like. We can already see that there's a, a, a local max here. And we think there's two inflection points. Right? All right, let's find a derivative. That was easy. So f double f prime of x equals zero uh, implies x x is zero, right? Yes, question on. Say again? Correct. Thank you. Agreed. I was doing the one from our test. Right, so we so yes, x equals zero is a, is our critical only critical value there. Good. Let's do our second derivative.
So there's our second derivative. Anybody agree? Yeah. So, so you okay with the first derivative? Okay, so then I take my first function and get the derivative of that. Take my second function, get the derivative of that. By the way, that's f prime, right? And then do my product loop. So uh, what's my, what are my C2 values? Plus or minus one, right? Yes? Hello? Yes? So now my number line. I, I like to put my critical values downstairs and I like to put my test values upstairs. And, and notice I'm gonna use my C1 value of zero. How are we doing here? Yeah, Callista. Yes. I already know this concavity. I see it's smiling, frowning, smiling. I see it's positive, negative, positive. Of course, I could test F double prime of negative 2 um, is e to the uh, don't tell me e to the negative 2 uh, times 3 actually it's it's the same whether I do positive or negative Right, so that's greater than zero. I'm just plugging that into the second derivative. Remember, you don't have to do that by hand. You could do it on Desmos, right? And then f double prime of zero is negative one. So negative. I'm just plugging it in. I mean, you don't have to watch me do that because you know how to do it yourself, right? I'm just getting a value. I don't have to actually get the value, you just have to get the sign, S-I-G-N, right? Uh, notice that F of zero is zero, and F of plus or minus one uh, is e to the minus one half which is one over square roots of E. Oh, sorry, F of zero is one, isn't it? You agree? So I need these for my conclusion, right? Question, Abigail. Uh, f of f of zero, so it's uh, e to the minus zero squared over two, right? Remember, we're using their original function f, right? Yep. All right, here we go. Conclusion. Uh, since f double prime of x is positive, if I could spell with help, on the interval from minus infinity to negative 1, union 1 to infinity, always open intervals, we know f of x is concave up on i. 
on that particular interval. The, the original function is concave up. When the second derivative is positive, positive people smile. The, the original function is concave up. Uh, since f double prime of x is negative, on minus 1 to 1, we know f is concave down on minus 1 to 1. Since f double prime changes signs, And for inflection, I don't care uh, positive to negative or negative to positive. It doesn't matter. For local min, it does. Local min and max, right? So f double prime changes signs at plus or minus 1. And f of plus or minus 1 equals e, uh, 1 over square root of e. So plus or minus 1 comma 1 over square roots of E are inflection points. Almost done. One more. Uh, since F prime of 0 uh, equals 0 and f of 0 equals 1 and f double prime of 0 is negative uh, 0 comma 1 is a local max question Um, let me give you some homework for the for Monday, okay? No, go ahead. Tell me how you really feel. So uh, so far we have two sections of work, four point two and 4.3, right? So suggested problems in 4.2 and suggested in 4.3 
Uh, I believe I gave these to you already. Can someone remind me what's suggested in 4.2? Fine. Don't tell me. Say again. W one to... One to 67. Thank you. Ah, why is everything so slow? Oh my God. I'm sorry, it's so slow. 